Okay, so how about this number? Again, let's try Eric's same thinking. I look at my six and I know that um, it's going to round up to seven. So now I have 3,547. Then I look, my four looks to my seven. So now I've got 355. And now my five and my five causes my five to go up to 36. So according to Eric, my answer should be 36,000. However, let's look at this in a number line and make sure we agree. You owe me $35,468 and you show up to my house with only $1,000 bills, assuming these exist. Okay, go with it. So let's draw our number line. And I know that one possibility is you can pay me $35,000. And the other possibility is that you can pay me $36,000. Now I need to think about what amount of money is in the middle. It would be $35,500. Okay, let's go back to my original number. 35,468 is gonna go on this side. It's not quite $500. It's close, but it's gonna go about here. So really my answer should be 35,000. So 35,468 rounded to the nearest thousand would be 35,000. So is Eric's method breaking down? It is. And this is awesome that Eric came up with this and we want to run with it and not squash it, but also help them to understand that in this case, that six caused this four to be something different than what it was, causing our number to be rounded up. I hope you found this video helpful and you've got a new way to think about rounding methodologies and what to do if your students come up with something crazy like that. Have a good one.